Hello and welcome to Tutorials Point. We are continuing our CSS video series. Now in this video, we are going to learn about box model. We will learn how box model comprises of content, padding, border, margin. Also, we will use dev tools to inspect our CSS and I'll teach you how to use the dev tools to inspect your website. So without wasting time, let's get started. So here I have created a folder called as chapter three and I have created two files in it, index.html and uh, style.css. And I have opened both of these files here. As you can see, we have nothing in the style.css and this is our index.html with just a h1 tag saying box model. Now, first of all, we'll talk about what is padding. Earlier, we saw what margin is in the last video. In this video, we will talk about padding first and then we'll move to box model to understand it, right? So let's say I will create a div. Okay, and let the, let it let it have any content in it. Let's say box. All right, I'll just save it, and the box text will appear here. Let's target this div, and for this div, I will have a font size of thirty pixels. Okay, a font size of thirty pixels. You may also say a border. Let's give it a border of one pixel, solid black. And as you can see, it has a border. Now there is something called as padding, which basically gives the spacing between the content and the border of this element. For example, I'm going to tell you padding. If I write padding of 20 pixels and save it, as you can see, it gives spacing. Spacing between what? Between the border, this border and this content named box, right? So there is a space, as you can see, from the left we have 20, from the top we have 20, from the bottom we have 20, and from the right as well, we have 20 pixels. So any element has margin as well as padding. So if I give this margin, of 20 pixels as you can see the margin is alongside the border as you can see we have a margin from top uh, left right and bottom all right now i'll tell you about the box model to understand the css box model i am going to quickly open my whiteboard here now here inside my whiteboard i'm going to give you a very simple example for example we write any text earlier we wrote a h1 let's say that was box all right, this was the text called as box. Now this will be called the content. This content will have some width and height. So this will be the width, anything, any pixels, let's say two pixels is going to be the width and it has a height as well. So the height is going to be something as, let's say two pixels for now, I'm just assuming. So this will be called as the content. Okay, after the content, we have something called as padding. So I'm going to make a box quickly something like this. Now to have spacing here, we, we earlier gave something called as padding. So I'll write padding here. Now, after the padding, we had something else. If you did remember, I'm going to write it here, it was border. So this is the padding area. First, we have this content area. Let me just write down content quickly. Then we have this padding area. The next area we have is for the border that we gave earlier, you know, that border one pixel solid. Uh, black. So I'm going to write here border, right? And then after the border, the next is for the margin. And then, and that margin we have already known in the earlier video, that margin is used to create space between elements on our web page. All right. So this is going to be our margin. So exactly what this CSS box model is, you have first the content where you can have some text or any of the element which will have a height and a width. And uh, then after that, you have padding. Okay, after that, you have padding. And after the padding, you have margin as well, just like of after the padding, we have border and then finally we have the margin. Okay, now let's go back to uh, CSS uh, box model. Let's go back to the uh, web browser where we can easily inspect this with the help of developer tools. Now I am back in my browser and here you can see we have this div that has the content box inside, right? So before quickly moving to developer tools, what I'm going to do is I'll give it a width. Let's say a width of 300 pixels, something like this. And we will also give it some height. Uh, height of 200 pixels. Okay, so we have width, we have height. Earlier we saw in the whiteboard after width and height, what we are, uh, what are, what do we have? We have the padding. So let me just move the padding here. 
so that you can see it in order and let's just put the font size above so we had the width height then we had the padding and then we go to the border and then we have the margin let me save it now to open developer tools there is a shortcut called as Control shift i on your keyboard you can use Control shift i to open the developer tools or, or another way is to right click anywhere on your browser and click on this inspect once you click on inspect as you can see the developer tools will open these are the developer tools this is basically your all html code your html tree we call it this is basically called as the dom short form for document object model where we can see our whole html document and all the elements there right for example, I have selected the box here, as you can see the body. Now, once I select the box here, as you can see, all the styling of the box appears on this right side. We have the font size, width, height, padding, border box, right? And also we have the CSS box model where we can easily visualize all of the mm, measurements for our particular box. We can also use this, as you can see here, select an element, uh, it says select an element in the page to inspect it. I'll click on it. And as you can see, when we hover about anything, we see different colors as you can see this blue color first this shows the content all right this shows the content then we have this green color right this green color shows what the padding and then we have this black color 1px border that we already gave and then the and the orange color here basically shows us the margin. Okay, so this is nothing but CSS box model. So you need to understand everything you see on any website on the internet is essentially a box, a rectangular box. That's how CSS works. So now if we click on it, as you can see here, we have the CSS box model. We have our widths and height as you can see for this, as you can see here, the width is 300, height is 200. Then we have the padding from all sides, 20, 20, 20, 20. Then we had the border. We have one pixels, which is almost close to 0 0.8 is almost close to one pixels. We have these borders. And then finally we have this margin of 20 pixels on all the four sizes. So this is a CSS box model. Now, one thing to note here is that we have set the width to 300 pixels and the height to 200 pixels now one of the properties in css is i'm going to write it down here is called as the box sizing and when i hit enter the box sizing has two options initially border box or content box i'll have the content box first and i'll save it and we don't need this property why because by default it is already applied so even if i comment it out there will be no changes so by default are all the elements in our browser will have this content box property what does it mean it means that the width assigned to this div will be 300 pixels and height assigned will be 200 pixels now watch this if i change this content box property first of all notice this this box model here in the dev tools as you can see the width is 300 and the height is 200 then we have separate paddings and separate borders right but now if i change this box sizing to border box and I save it. As you can see, there will be changing in the width and height of our div. Why is that? Let me just tell you. It's because when we specify this property of box sizing and we set it to border box, this is basically that we are telling the browser to include the padding and border measurements inside our width and height. So therefore, now the width of this element is not going to be 300 pixels. No, it will be equal to width it will this this 300 pixels basically will include the padding of 20 pixels as well as the border of one pixels that is why here in the dev tools this size is adjusted accordingly so if you calculate here the width is 258.4 plus this 20 plus 0.8 plus 0.8 from this side and this plus 20 as well which is equal to 300 itself similarly for the height we have set the height to 200 pixels so the total height including pad padding and border will be 200 pixels how you can check here in the border in the box itself as you can see the height here is 158.4 plus 20 padding from down plus 20 uh, padding from top plus border point 8 from top and border point 8 from bottom and it is equal to 200 in total now one thing to um, notice here is that the margin is not included in the total width or height of any element in html right so you remember this when box sizing it is is said to is basically set equivalent to border box then the width and height of the element includes padding as well as border but not margin 
All right, so in short, let's just understand this. If we delete this one or if I comment it out and save it, nothing will happen because by default, the box sizing is set to content box. Now, what will happen here is the total width of this div will be equal to its width. 300 pixels plus 20 pixels on right and 20 pixels on left and this one pixel border on right and one pixel border on left which will be equal to 342 pixels to be precise right similarly for the height the height of this div element will be equal to 200 pixels plus 20 uh, padding on the top padding on the bottom so that that basically gives us how much 240 pixels and then one px border from top one px border from bottom and that will be equal to how much it will be equal to 242 pixels now this is in case of when box sizing is set to content box by default but now if the box sizing is set to border box what will happen here the total width will be equal to 300 pixel which will include the right left padding of 20 20 pixels as well as right left border of 1 1 pixels exactly similarly the height will be total equal to 200 pixels here which will include 20 pixel padding top and bottom uh, that is 40 pixels and the uh, to, uh, the top and bottom border of one pixel each right so this is how it works now what i am going to do is it's uh, you may ask that what should we use should we use the default content box or should we use this border box let me just show you let me just comment out this code for now we don't need it as well as this div I'm going to create a new div here, all right, to, to demonstrate which one to use. And in fact, you will see on maximum of the web apps or websites out there, they will be using box sizing border box for their entire HTML. So I will recommend you to do the same. Now, why is that? Let me tell you, I will create a div and I will give it a class of parent. And now inside this div, I will create another div and give it a class of child. All right. And here in the parent, let me have a text saying something like parent container, right? As the name says, and then this is going to be named child container. So there is a parent container and inside parent, we have a child container. If I save it and refresh it, as you can see, we have a parent and child container. Now I'm going to write some style for it. I'm going to target my parent container first and let me give it some uh, stuff. For example, the width, let's give it 400 pixels. I will give it a height of 400 pixel as well. And let's give it a background color of black and let's give the text color of white. All right. So I'll write white and save it. And as you can see, this is the parent container. Let me just uh, put it a little bit down the, the, the developer tools, of course. So this is the parent container with this width and height and black color and white text. Now I will target this child container. And for this child container day, what am I going to do is I am going to have some separations. I'll have it a height should be 300 pixels. If I save it, nothing will happen because I have to give it a color right so how about background color give it something like gray if i save it as you can see now it is easily visible there is a parent container that is black color and inside that parent container we have a child container that is gray color very well now by default it is of what is the box sizing it is border box sorry it is content box now what will happen is watch this if i set the width to be 100 percent if I set the width of this child to be 100%, this means, so setting the width 100% of this child container means that its parent's width, if it is 400 pixels, then the child's width should be 100% of its parent's width. That is, the child's width should also be 400 pixels. That is what this width of 100% means. Now, how can we have this? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it a color. All right, let's say green. And if I save it, the text color is green, but we can uh, like definitely change it. Actually, we don't need this green color. Now, what am I going to do is I'm going to give it a box sizing. This child will have a box sizing and the box sizing by default is content box. We will set it to, for, by default, it's content box. All right, fine. Okay, the width is 100%. We have the box sizing set to content box. Let's give it a border. Now, see, once I give it a border, let's say, 10px 
solid and I already have a color written here. Let me just copy paste it quickly. You can have any color and save it. As you can see, since by default, what is the box sizing here? The box sizing here is content box. So what happens is the border, as you can see, is outside. The border is outside. The border is after the specified width and height, right? It's after. Now, if I say padding, let's say 5px, if I save it now, as you can see, it, it looks very neat. So the, as you can see, basically after the width and height, the border and padding are not included in it. But if we said, if we said, I'm sorry, I had uh, write, written this two times, let it be one time. So basically now, if I write instead of content box, I will write border box. You will see how this border and padding will be adjusted in this width and height. You will see it here. So if I write here border box and if I save it, as you can see, the, the padding and the border are adjusted in the width and height itself. This is why uh, box sizing set to border box becomes useful in many real world use cases, as we will see in the coming project videos. That will be enough for this video. In the next video, we will learn how to reset default CSS. We will also learn about CSS display property. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and I will see you in the next video.